My name is Dee Dee Jensen and I live in Reno, Nevada and my hubby and I have a 2022 Sprinter Rebel. So we've had the rig for exactly one year now, um, got it December of last year and it is our first adventure rig like this. Um, actually, our background is we, in the last 30 years, we've had various Jeeps. We love to go Jeeping. We've been four-wheeling, and that's been a lot of fun. And my background is I like to go camping, and I love backpacking. So when you're backpacking, I have everything in my backpack. I have my tent and my sleeping bag, my sleeping pad, my cook stove, all my food and you can just go wherever you want and spend the night. Well, that's nothing my hubby likes to do, so it was kind of a natural progression for us to get a camper van, something we could both do together and explore the outdoors and, and be able to sleep wherever we want to sleep. So my favorite part of the van, I mean, we looked at so many different vehicles to try to figure out what would work for us. Um, it's the biggest rig I've ever driven. So what we actually did is we rented two different rigs before we got ours. We rented the same model that we have right now, which is the 144, the shorter one. And I was kind of nervous at first about driving it, but it drives so easily. It drives like a passenger vehicle. It's so easy to maneuver, easy to park. I love that. I love that it's compact. Um, I love that we wanted to have a dedicated shower and toilet for us because we do use it all four seasons. So I don't, didn't want to have just the outside shower. Um, I love that the bed, when you're not using it, that we can raise it. And we have that whole garage area underneath. Um, we kind of, when we got it, we did a little conversion back there and made it into a little lounge area. So I just love that it's so compact and I have it packed, ready to go at a moment's notice we can take off and go on to our next adventure. We, when we first got the van, before we got it, we it was during the pandemic, so we had a lot of time to do a lot of research, and we read all these blogs, watched all these YouTube videos, and we kind of figured out what we want in our van. So when we picked it up, we brought it to Agile right away and actually left it here for a month. And we had a whole list of things that we wanted done. Like some people say to get a van first and try it out and don't get all the stuff in the beginning. Well, for us, we researched it so well, we kind of knew what we wanted to begin with. So we started with, like the first thing was we got the, the RIP, the, the ride improvement kit for the suspension. And we upgraded the fuel tank. We knew we were going to be off-roading a lot. So we wanted that extra fuel. So we went with bigger auxiliary fuel tank. Um, we went with bigger wheels, bigger tires, bigger brakes. Um, one of the things I love is we added a window in the back in the garage so it just more airflow and more light so that there were a lot of things that we did to begin. And then now we've used it for a year. Um, we use it in all conditions. We use it in the winter, we use it all seasons. So now we've come back and we had a whole list of other things that we wanted. Um, one of the main things that my husband really wanted was the Agile ARB rear air locker. Um, we did, oh, so now there's more modifications we couldn't get back then, like we increased the, the fuel tank again, so we went from the 24 and a half fuel, 24 and a half gallon fuel tank to the 40 gallon fuel tank. We upgraded our 21 gallon water tank to a I think it's 35 gallons. Um, one of the things I was really worried about because we do a lot of winter camping is I keep hearing about the condensation building up inside. So we added in the front windshield, there's this boot cover that you can do for the condensation buildup. So that was important to me. Um, the other thing I didn't even know we could get this upgrade, but we just did it here at Agile, is the mirrors, the side mirrors fold in. So that's so nice when you're in a parking spot or something, you don't want these mirrors sticking out, so we did that. Um, and then just today when we were here, we've been waiting for 
the Bilstein chalk, so they just arrived, so we're getting that done. So, I, and it's kind of like having a, a second house. I mean, you get the house you think you want, you have all these modifications, but then as you're using it in time, you find there are more things that you want. So I'm thinking this probably won't be the last time that we're here, <laughs> um, but those are the main things that we got this time. We have done so many different trips because like we use the camper van year round. Um, when we first picked it up from Agile and drove it back to Reno where we live, we went up the Pacific Coast Highway and it was so wonderful just seeing all that beautiful scenery and not having to get a hotel room and just stopping where we wanted to. So it took us eight days to get home, which that's because we had so many fun spots that we stayed at. And then after we were home about three or four weeks, we went to Utah and did a ski trip. And we stayed eight nights in it. And that was really fun. We skied at a different area every day. I snowshoed every day. And that's where that condensation issue came up that I was really worried about because you are sleeping in the van, you're breathing, and it's below freezing outside. But it's toasty warm inside. So that's why I was worried about that condensation. But that was a really fun trip. Um, we've done just, it hasn't been one specific one, like we went to Moab and did a lot of fun trails there and met so many fun people, did some stuff that was kind of hairy for me in that because that's the largest vehicle I've ever driven, but we were with a lot of people who were experienced, so I never felt uncomfortable, but maybe a little nervous and excited, but that was fun. Um, there was one time when we were coming back from Moab, back to Reno, and we were out in the boonies on BLM land and it was a lot of snow and it was getting late at night and we were kind of looking for a place to spend the night and the snow was getting deeper and deeper and nobody knew where we were and there was no cell coverage so after a few minutes we decided to stop and back up and get to safer areas so just so many fun trips and I can't really name any single one specifically that's my favorite So future trips, I mean, we will do another ski trip again this winter because that was so much fun last year. So I know we'll do that, maybe go back to Utah or go to Colorado or some different areas. Um, I really want to, in the springtime, go up along the Oregon coast and do some of that. Um, just, I want to explore as much as I can here in the Western United States. But one big trip I would love to do in the future, I have no idea going to happen or not but we follow this couple on YouTube and they took their van to Europe and we met them and talked to them and they went over there for three months so it's totally feasible something we can do and that's just on my bucket list I would love to do that go over there for three or four months I think it would be fantastic so I don't know maybe maybe a year from now I can come back and talk to you and tell you how wonderful it was that I would love that So van life is a lot of different things, but most importantly for me, it gives us the freedom to take off and go to places that we wouldn't normally go to because we'd have to come back that evening and get a room or go back home. Um, we can go out and explore areas and just spend the night and just keep going one night after the other. Um, it's also the community of van lifers, the people who we've met. It's such a wonderful, tight-knit community. Um, you can meet these people and in one night's time after you're sitting around a fire, you know, talking, eating, drinking, sharing stories. There, there are stories you wouldn't share with someone else that you just met. It's that you have this instant bond with people. Um, this camaraderie. I, I just love that. Um, it's, it's just a great community. I feel really blessed to be part of it. Okay, my advice for anyone looking to get into the van community, there's so much information out there. There are so many blogs and places you can get information. And kind of like what I mentioned earlier, like we rented two of them to see what would work for you. I think you have to look at it 
and such that you need to make a list of what's important to you. Are you looking to get a van just to drive across the country and stay on paved roads and stay at campgrounds? That's one possibility. Are you looking to get a vehicle that will take you four-wheeling off-grid? Um, in that case, you're going to need the, the upgraded suspension. You're going to want the extra fuel tank, the extra water tank. You're going to want all these extra features. So I would say look at your life, what you want to do, make a list of the things that you want to do. And then, you know, we got our unit and had a list already of things we knew we wanted, and we did that. Um, but then do spend some time in your vehicle because it's, to me, it's like, it's like the greatest little second house you'll ever own on wheels. And even if you bought a second house with everything you thought you needed, as time goes on, you're gonna to wanna to make modifications and changes. So I would say just enjoy the journey and talk to other people. The van community is so wonderful to share any of their experiences and their stories and, and their finds of what they get. Um, I don't know, I, I would just say talk to people, do some research, and just take the leap. And to me, it's it's opened up just a world of adventure and fun. And I I'm so happy to be in it. I wasn't on here. Okay. But do you have a name for your rig? So we do have a name for our rig. Actually, we have named all of our cars that we've ever owned. So I'm kind of funny that way. But we named our rig Miss Sophie. And that is in honor of my husband's grandmother, who I never got to meet, but I heard many wonderful stories about her. So we lovingly refer to her always as Miss Sophie. Let's take Miss Sophie out today. Or what would, would Miss Sophie like this? And would she, you know, would she like this modification? So we always refer to her as Miss Sophie. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. And uh, we typically send out videos weekly, so we'll see you next week.